Hello everybody, how's it going? It's a new day. Cheers everybody. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Been dealing with a lot of local authorities, government agencies, that sort of thing. What a day we had yesterday. So my son's DLA stopped. That's a government benefit for disabled people. Disability living allowance. That was a bit of a mess. It stopped when he was 16 and it shouldn't have. It should have been transferred from the Department of Work and Pensions, DWP, across to the Scottish devolved government who is now in charge of taking over this particular part of payouts in Scotland. It's a child disability agency, something like that. So in England it would stop at 16 and you would have to apply for the adult version PIP, which is personal independence payment, I think. But that doesn't apply in Scotland anymore, so his file should have been transferred across to Scotland and it wasn't. So when we looked into it, which took many, many hours, in fact, most of the day on the phone, it turned out that they had, somewhere along the line, changed his address. Changed his address to Luxembourg, where we left in 2008. They changed it in 2019. This is what the system said. And we were like, what? So we spent the whole day, basically, trying to track down this anomaly. Why had they changed his address? And how do we sort it? And it's it, it's very, very stressful. L listening to hold music for hour upon hour, honestly, it's it's the worst. So if you're watching this and you work in a department that has hold music, offer a button push that says, please don't play hold music. That would be so good. Then you could leave your phone with the speaker on and get on with your day and not, oh. So we didn't resolve it. We're waiting on a call back. A call back. It's a number that you can't call or a department that you can't call. So if they don't call us back, where does that leave us? And I may sound a little negative thinking if they don't call back, but that's been my experience. So, we're left short of money. We've missed two months of payments because they stopped the money. And if the DWP can't transfer this file to the Scottish Department, we have to reapply from scratch, which is just not really something we want to entertain. Although, of course, we will if we have to, but... I mean, that's a six, eight week process. This is all because our son's reached 16 and it's opened our eyes to a lot of changes that we're going to have to deal with as parents of a child who needs help dealing with the big white world, including things like power of attorney. We'll need to set that up, which is going to cost us like 300 and something quid to set that up. And bank account, he needs a bank account, so we've got that underway. And schooling, we've managed to keep him in school. I mean, this is a separate video in itself, but, you know, we homeschooled him for a little while, put him back in school, and he's been struggling this year. We struggled last year and he's been struggling this year. 
and we had decided to take him out and just say enough's enough. But we had a really good meeting with the pastoral care teacher who's who's a new new in post at Aaron High School. And she and her assistant have been really, really good. So we're quite hopeful that they will come up with a plan that will help them to to learn some life skills. How to navigate life, how to go shopping, get on buses, stuff like that. So we have another big meeting coming up next week with all the deputy head, educational psychologist, uh, what's his name, Colin McDermott, the inclusion officer. I'm not quite sure what that is, but he'll be there maybe. Health worker. All interested parties. And Jenny, the pastoral care teacher, whose title is SSR. I don't know what that means. They use a lot of jargon. And I did ask what it meant, but I've forgotten. So that will be next week. So there's a lot going on, man. There's a lot going on. And I'm struggling myself, honestly, just to try and stay on top and get on with my things. Remain positive with my work and... I suppose it's times like that where making videos and doing my journal and it is... is more important than when I'm feeling good. And of course that's the time when I'm most likely to skip making any kind of content. So I need to remember my why. Why am I doing this? Not to blow up. But because it helps me and I think it might help other people to see. That putting out content like this can help. You know. Speaking of content like this, I watched an amazing video yesterday from somebody I met on the Part-Time YouTuber Academy. A guy called Joe Gannon, who's somebody I always really loved. I always got on great with Joe when we were on calls. And he was so, so happy and outgoing and effusive and, you know, that... He couldn't help but feel good in his company, even though it was online. And he put out this long video, half hour long video, talking about burnout. Okay, so um, this video is talking about burnout i think any content online people should share the the highs and the lows we, we all know that right but i came across a quote which basically said so in like the content creation spheres you have like building in public basically share share what you're doing um and you'll meet people along the way and that's really fulfilling i read a quote which said don't build in public but burn out in private and that really hit home for me I was reminded of it because I was listening to him on a podcast with another part-time YouTuber Academy graduate, Acta. And they were talking about Joe's business, about how to repurpose your content in an efficient way. So Joe runs an agency doing that for some big hitters like Ali Abdul. So when I listened to that, I was reminded of Joe's burnout video and I watched it again and it was like... Yeah, it's just so cool to see people putting out authentic, heartfelt, you know, stuff that, that helps them, such as this, this helps me, but it also helps people who watch it. You know, I started this kind of idea after seeing a female singer-songwriter called Dodie, who, who was putting out some, some videos about how she was feeling, and I was like, I found it really helpful, so... And to those of you who've commented on my Patreon or by email or whatever, that means a lot. It's really nice to get messages like that. Because, you know, I can feel like we're alone sometimes. Working from home, all of that. And I tell myself I'm not drinking, I'm not taking drugs, so everything's good. But I'm still self-harming with sugar. Being diabetic. You know, it's an easy... It's an easy thing to do. Ah, my medication isn't working. My metformin isn't high enough or strong enough or whatever. So my sugar reading this morning was 
15.4. And I wasn't going nuts yesterday, I was just eating like oven chips and, you know, easy comfort food. Mm. Although I did have a little bit of chocolate and stuff. A Twix. But Joe talked about exercise and he talked about sleep and he talked about diet, obviously. These are three big dominoes. I quite like that analogy. Because if you can get those three dominoes right, then the little dominoes will all start to topple as well. And I'm not getting them right. I haven't been up the hill of beans. Gosh, must be over two weeks. Since Clover got quite sick, basically. I've not been able to get up there. I just haven't felt like going up without the dog, you know. She's still with us. Both dogs are still with us. And that's another source of anguish as well at the moment. So I'm not exercising. My diet's in the pan. So these are two, two big dominoes. But I see my third domino as, as this. Making content, doing my writing every day. Playing music. That's a good domino. Reading for pleasure. So I sat last night and read some Titus Grown, which I'm really digging. I'm halfway through it now. Such good writing. Anyway, this has been a bit long and rambly and unstructured. Well, that's my MO, isn't it? But I feel this is longer than usual, so I'm going to get off. Feeling better as I do, having done this. Feeling better already. So you see, it's worth doing this. See you later.